We live or die by stories. The stories we tell, the stories we hear, the stories we have come to know. Since the beginning of time, storytelling has been a practice of preservation, preserving our humanity, preserving our memories, and preserving our joy. Tony Cade Bambara, the writer Toni Morrison called outrageously brilliant, describes her raison d'etre as a storyteller. Here's how she explains it. Stories keep us alive in the ships, in the camps, in the quarters, in the fields, in the prisons, on the road, on the run, under siege, in the throes, on the verge. The storyteller snatches us back from the edge to hear the next chapter. It's easy to take stories for granted, but as Bambara makes clear in the words I just quoted, the very being of our lives depends in no small way on storytelling as a way to practice preservation of our humanity and our memories and our joy. How shall we remember these three critical outcomes of storytelling as a practice of preservation? Why, by telling three stories, of course. One, storytelling as a way to preserve our humanity. My guess is that we are all born with an innate sense of our humanity and that our awareness of that sense continues to grow as we mature. Depending on where you grew up, your understanding of humanity is intertwined with the humanity of others, and you might not have realized this or found a garden in which this idea could bloom. I, for example, was raised in the politically and religiously conservative rural South. I think, or at least I like to think, that explains my indifference to the death penalty for so many years. I vividly remember thinking that Byron De La Beckwith, the racist white supremacist who killed Medgar Evers, deserved to die. When De La Beckwith was finally convicted in 1994, I was angry that he was sentenced to life in prison and not to death. A few years later, I read a book, though, that changed my view about the inhumanity of the death penalty no matter how awful, no matter how racist, no matter how violent or consequential. Just in case you're wondering, I'm not trying to convert any of you to be anti-death penalty advocates. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I would describe myself that way. What I am, however, is a person whose mind was changed because of a story. The story was Ernest Gaines's award-winning book, A Lesson Before Dying. In this novel, the main character, Jefferson, has been convicted as an accomplice to murder. When his attorney says that it would be no different from killing a hog if they killed Jefferson, Jefferson realizes that the white people in his small rural Louisiana town don't see his, him as human. He's less concerned at this point with dying than he is with living in a world that denies his humanity. One of the lessons he learns is one that we must also learn, that giving voice to and sharing one story helps to preserve our humanity. We hear from him finally in a chapter titled Jefferson's Diary. In broken but beautiful English, he confesses, Mr. Wiggin, you say write something, but I don't know what to write. I ain't never wrote a letter in all my life. A few entries later, he has tried harder, and his confidence in using his diary to tell his story grows. Mr. Wiggin, you say you like what I got here, but you still can't give me an A, just a B, because I ain't gone deep enough in me yet. When I ask you what you mean when you say go deep, you say just say what's on my mind. In other words, he must tell his story. In an effort to explain to Jefferson why telling his story matters, Mr. Wiggins tells Jefferson that going deep can save him and perhaps also one day save the children in his community. Lord have mercy, sweet Jesus, Mr. Wiggins, where all them people come from. I could see some were scared of me, but most was brave and spoke. And my little cousin Estelle even come up 
and kiss me on the jaw. And then I couldn't hold back no more. Like Jefferson, when I teach this novel, I can't hold it back. The tears flow freely as I read this shining example of the power of storytelling. It keeps us alive, even unto death. Jefferson's telling of his story preserves his humanity and ours. Two, storytelling as a way to preserve our memory. Stories that preserve memory can also inspire us to imagine what can be. Recently, a video of my grandfather I had not seen previously surfaced on social media. There he was, 92 years young and as sharp as a tack, telling the story of President Teddy Roosevelt's visit to our small black town to hunt black bear. In this clip, he talks about his friend, Willie Goodall, who was the president's guide. Seeing that video, hearing and seeing my grandfather tell a story on a series called Lost Louisiana sent me down a rabbit hole. That's what good storytelling does. It sends us on a journey. What else didn't I know? I knew that my grandfather had filed a lawsuit on behalf of my aunt to integrate Madison Parish Public Schools. And I knew that he was one of the earliest black citizens to register to vote in my hometown of Tallulah. What I didn't know though, until I read a story that he told someone else who had interviewed him, was that as an act of rebellion against state-sanctioned disenfranchisement, in 1954, he and seven of his comrades sued the registrar of voters, arguing that their civil rights had been violated by the requirement to have not one but two white people vouch for the identity of black people before they would be allowed to vote. The same white man who stole your labor, underpaying you, could deny you and knowing you if it meant keeping you from voting. The suit was dismissed on a technicality. The judge said that their 9 a.m. arrival was late for a hearing that was supposed to start at 9.30, assuming that they would be followed every one of the 60 miles they had to travel to get to court. They left in plenty of time. They left so early that they even had time to take this picture. This is not a picture of people who are running late. <laughs> But they were undeterred. They looked the literacy test option square in the eye and began to tutor people who had the courage to register to vote. Even people who couldn't read or write passed. One of the ways that they did this was by telling stories so that everyone would understand. They were so successful that the city elected Zelma Charles White as the first black sheriff in the Deep South since Reconstruction. The headlines were ablaze. Time Magazine said top cop in Louisiana. Ebony said black lawman in KKK territory. The New York Times, white support, a little bit difficult. Having access to these memories was possible only because someone was committed to telling the stories and to preserving these truths. Stories like these, Stories that for me are far more about liberation than they are about oppression help me to know what's possible because I have clarity about what was. And what was was a fierce determination by my grandfather and others to make a better life for his children and their children and their children's children. Three, storytelling as a way to preserve our joy. A few days ago, I posted something on social media that kept my phone buzzing for a couple of hours. I casually typed, my job is better than yours. No, really it is. <laughs> and here's the kicker, I meant it. Well, I don't know really if my job is better than yours, but I sure do enjoy my job. And that was the point for me. There are a lot of reasons that I love working at Howard University every day. High among them though is at 12 noon, and 6 p.m., without fail, every day, right after the alma mater, the chime plays, lift every voice and sing. How many people get to hear the Negro National Anthem at their job every day? All three stanzas tell the quintessential story of black joy in the face of adversity. Let our rejoicing rise. We have come away over tears that have been watered. 
true to our God, true to our native land. If I'm ever unclear at my desk or in the classroom about the what, the why, or the how, or the when by 12.05 or 6.05, and some days I do need two reminders, <laughs> I know my task to march on until victory is won. It's the story in and of that song that reminds me of that. It's like this Lucille Clifton poem that I keep close to my heart. Won't you celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed? That's what the best of storytelling is for me, and no doubt for you. It's a practice of preservation, preserving and awakening our humanity, preserving and enlivening our memory, and preserving and inspiring our joy. Black girl joy, black boy joy, black people joy. In the ships, in the camps, in the quarters, the fields, the prisons, on the road, on the run, under siege, in the throes, on the verge, stories. Your stories, my stories, our stories, save our lives. Thank you.